All right, guys, welcome to your 53rd tutorial in, yeah, I think it's time to finish this bad boy up. So let me go ahead and explain the last line of code in case you guys were just like cheating and kind of just picked up on this tutorial. What I did in the last line of code is basically I got the name of the item and I stored it in a variable called A. So now that we have the name of the item, we can go ahead and get the value of the item. So let's go ahead and, whoa, not bar. Uh, I, got, I guess I got beer in my mind. Let's go ahead and take the value of the item and store it in a variable called B. Now remember, whenever we are setting an item, we use the variable, or excuse me, we use the function set item. Whenever we are getting the value of an item, we use the function get item. Now the function get item basically returns the value of an item. Which item you ask? Well we need to pass it in a parameter so if we had something like I don't know we had a variable named Bucky and it had a value of or excuse me we had a variable called people and we had a value of Bucky we would pass people into here and it would return Bucky so now a would be people and B would be Bucky so now that we have the name of the variable or item and also its value we can go ahead and start printing it out on the screen so let me go ahead and in order to print it out in the right box we first need to access this right box right like here and actually I can go ahead and cheat and grab this whole thing Shh, don't tell anyone I'm cheating so go ahead and grab the inner HTML and I'm gonna explain this we can't just go ahead and set this equal to you know a single line of text like this because this is gonna loop through let's say 10 times at the end of the tenth time it's gonna say okay set this equal to A and B so each time it's gonna replace the inner HTML so instead of just replacing it ten times and ending up with a single line we want the inner HTML to be ten lines long so in order to do that instead of just setting equal to one line we need to add that line on to this property right here so then the first time it loops through it's going to be one line the second time it's going to be two lines and it keeps adding lines and lines onto this property and at the end you have you know hopefully a list of like five or six different things so now that we have that taken care of let's go ahead and start printing out these variables I'm just gonna go ahead and print out the name of the variable which is stored in the variable a and also the value of the item or variable but I just don't want to print them out right after each other. What I want to do is I actually want to add a little one of these so you know it just looks a little prettier and then just go ahead and stick on the value of it and after this since we're going to be working with a bunch of different variables I want each of these to appear on a new line so in order to do that just go ahead and add a break at the end and this is going to make them appear on a new line so let me go ahead and save this and yeah everything looks pretty good to go so this basically loops through all the variables you have stored and makes them appear on the new line so let me go ahead and copy the path to that and refresh it and check it out we got all this crap because I was testing it out in my last tutorial but I want to show you guys how this works let me go ahead and refresh this launching Google Chrome and I'm gonna go ahead and store the variable a a save it in there B B save it in there C C save it in so instead of just storing one variable in its value we can store a bunch of different variables in their value now let me go ahead and go to my website the new boston.org oh, one over it's happened in on my forum any active topics looking cool oh you know this looks good how old are you yada yada and now I got okay you know what I think I'm gonna go back to that website and check it out when we go back all our information is still stored all of our variables so if we were like on a website like YouTube and we wanted to keep a list of our favorites or more likely you'd be building something like a shopping cart and you want to keep the users items and maybe they went to a different website to compare prices or something when they came back all of their items are still stored for them and say they wanted to add another item to their shopping cart like tuna and I don't know maybe it was like twelve dollars well you can store that in there too and then when you go to you know another website come back all that information is stored there right for you so again 
before with JavaScript. As soon as we left this page, then all of the user's information and data would get destroyed. But now what you can do is you can have the user, you know, go to different websites, check out different prices, build a shopping cart, and then whenever they came back, all of their information is stored for them. So for saying, okay, so whenever you're working with sessions, does it store it a day? Does it store it a week? Does it store it a month? Well, whenever we're working with sessions in HTML5, a session lasts as long as you have that browser open. As soon as you X out of it, like I just did, look what happens. We're going to go ahead and launch this in Chrome again, and we get a brand new session. So let me go ahead and, you know, store tuna for $4 and apples for $65, pretty expensive apples. This information is going to be stored as long as we have our browser open. So check it out. But as soon as I go ahead and close out of this browser, then the information gets destroyed. So that is how long a session lives. It lives as long as you want it to. So now, okay guys, I'm done talking. I am, uh, you know, my throat is parched. I need to go chug a milkshake or something. So anyways, I hope you understand that basically how to use the web storage API and when it could be useful whenever you're building things like shopping carts and stuff of that matter. If you ever want to make a program where you know maybe you want to store information for longer such as like if you made something like eBay where you had a list of items and you wanted it to be saved there for like a month or YouTube like a list of favorite videos then you would need to use a database that would probably be your best bet but anyways for simple shopping cart applications and you know I don't know just, I don't know someone think of something else for me because I'm my mind's drawing a blank right now this is your best bet but anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video